This is Cerebral Cinema. Movies of the Mind. <laughs> Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell. Yeah, danger is my assignment. I get sent to a lot of places I can't even pronounce. They all spell the same thing, though. Trouble, but... When I walk into the commissioner's office, I don't realize this assignment's going to wind up with me depending for my life on a tray full of dirty dishes. Morning, Commissioner. Ruth said you had an assignment for me. I do, Steve. Your plane leaves for the Middle East in one hour. The Middle East? Don't tell me I have to crawl along that pipeline over there looking for leaks. You'll be looking for leaks, all right, but not oil. I don't get you. Steve, we're on the verge of suffering a very serious diplomatic and strategic defeat. Well, nothing like a note of cheer to start the day on, I always say. What's the deal? Take a look at this map of the Middle East, Steve. Uh-huh. For some time now, we've been negotiating very secretly with this country here. What kind of negotiations? Negotiations which would pave the way for United Nations bases in that area. I see. But why all the secrecy? The country in question insisted on it. You see, they've been periodically intimidated by powerful interests to the northeast of them. They wanted to have all the negotiations concluded before any information concerning them fell into what uh, we might call the wrong hand. Wait a minute. You say there's been a leak? Is that what you're talking about? Exactly. This morning we learned through confidential sources that the document containing the complete preliminary discussions regarding military installations is now in the hands of those hostile interests I was talking about. What? How did that happen? That's exactly what you're flying to the Middle East to find out, Steve. I sure get all the cinches, don't I? Steve, it's vital we plug up this leak. If we don't, the entire negotiation may collapse, which would seriously <clears throat> endanger our entire position in the Middle East. You say a copy of the document got into the wrong hands. Does anybody know which copy it was? Yes, that particular copy was last in the possession of a man named Khalid. He's the Middle Eastern country's representative in the negotiations. Oh, what's his story about it? He says the document was stolen from his house. Brother, that particular story is pretty ancient. Yes, isn't it? he may be lying. It's up to you to find out. Get over there, Steve. Talk to this colleague and do whatever you have to to get to the bottom of this whole rotten mess. Well, that's it. You've got your assignment. Good luck. National Broadcasting Company is presenting Dangerous Assignments, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell, colorful two-fisted government agent. At all those places of the world where danger and intrigue walk hand in hand, there you'll find Steve Mitchell on another Dangerous Assignment. Sure, I've got my assignment. Just a little matter of dropping over to the Middle East and investigating a government figure named Khalid to find out if he's the boy who's been peddling diplomatic secrets to the wrong parties. All of which is pretty sure to make me slightly unpopular with both the government figure and the wrong parties. Yep, I've got an uneasy hunch. I'm about to get voted the boy they'd most like to see drop dead. It's Thursday morning when my plane lands in the Middle East country and I figure my first step is to talk to this Khalid. So I find out his address and grab a taxi. It's a large house out of the city, and I walk up to the front door, and then I see that it's occupied. You have business here, perhaps? Perhaps. Now, if you'll quit blocking the door so I can knock... You wish to see Khalid, perhaps? Perhaps again, if it's okay with you. You will tell me why you wish to see Khalid, perhaps? You just spoiled your average. Look, I don't know who you are or why you're roosting in front of the door, but I came here to talk to Khalid, not you. Now, if you'll just get out of my way, I'll... Before you may talk to Khalid, it is quite necessary that I know who you are. Are you his bodyguard or something? You might say that one of my men is acting as bodyguard for the moment. I don't get it, Buster. Hammer. Lieutenant Hammer. Police Lieutenant Hammer. Oh, police? Yes. Hmm. And now you will tell me who you are, perhaps. Here, take a look at my credentials, perhaps. So... It does not surprise me to meet a United States agent here after the unfortunate incident of the theft of the document. Yeah, but it does sort of surprise me to see a police detective here. Have you got Khalid under arrest? Let us just say he is being detained for the moment in his house. On account of the document? On account of his wife. What's his wife got to do with it? At present, nothing. Hmm. You see, last night she was murdered. What? Wait, you, you think Khalid killed her? We do not know at present. Hmm. Her body was discovered this morning in a ditch several hundred meters down the road. Uh, come, I will show you the place. Ah, 
Here is the ditch where the wife's body was discovered, Mitchell. Uh, at that spot over there, to be exact. You uh, say her body was discovered this morning, Lieutenant Hammer? That is correct. But the time of her death is, as near as we can learn, was sometime before midnight last night. Mm. How was she killed? Shot? Stabbed? It appears she was beaten to death. Mm. Where was her husband last night? Khalid. Yeah. He claims to have been at a civic function. We are checking up on his story. Would you like to question him? In a minute. First, uh... What is it? Hey. Up here by the road, near the ditch. Those footprints? Yeah. Yes, yes, I noticed them too. A man's footprints beside the road. Of course, they're quite a few feet from the spot where the body was in the ditch. Maybe there's no tie-in, but to play safe, it might be a good idea to have a technician from your police lab come out here and check them over. I will give the necessary orders. Okay, Lieutenant. Now I'd like to go back to the house and talk to Carly and see just what kind of a story he's got for us. If there is anything I can do to help clear up this matter, I will be only too glad to do so. That's uh, being pretty cooperative, Khalid. The sooner the murder is solved, the sooner my name will be cleared of these absurd and vicious charges of betraying my country by allowing secret documents to pass into the hands of the others. Just a minute, Khalid. What makes you think your wife's murder is tied in with the other deal? Why, uh, I just assumed that it was. I see. I'd like you to tell me where you were last night, Khalid. Of course. Abura and I went first to dinner at Ali's restaurant. Who's Abura? My aide and secretary. Ah, go on. Then he drove me over to the new civic building. The dedication ceremony was last night. The building is not ready for use yet, as the cement work is not completed. But they wish to dedicate it anyway, and I was the principal speaker. After the ceremony, Abura and I drove back here to my home. What time was it? I would say it was about midnight when we got here. The lights were on, but my wife was missing. There were evidences of a struggle, furniture overturned, and and bloodstains. I immediately called the police. We commenced a search immediately, Mitchell, but it was not until this morning that the body was discovered. Oh, poor Sahavita. Khalid, uh, did your wife have any enemies? Enemies? Somebody who had a reason for killing her? But everyone loved Sahavita. She was kind and gentle. Uh, looks like at least one person didn't exactly love her. Wait. Old Mikan. Who? Mikan, our servant. My wife dismissed him several days ago. Oh, why? She would not tell me her reasons, and I did not press her. But I believe there was a quarrel between them at the time. I see. Any idea where we could find this servant? No. No, when my wife dismissed Mikan, he moved into the city. But where, I do not know. Uh, Khalid, can you describe him for us? I can do better than that. I believe there is a picture of him in one of these drawers. Ah, yes, yes. Here you are, gentlemen. Here it is. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Just one more thing, Khalid. Yes? I'm still interested in knowing why you connect your wife's murder to the other incident regarding the document. Why, uh, I suppose because the two events took place within a few days of each other. Uh, according to Lieutenant Hama, your story is that somebody stole that document from your house here. But of course. Did you have it locked up in a safe? What? Well, no, it was in a desk drawer. Oh, sounds like a pretty careless way to treat an important document, Khalid. On the contrary, I felt I was being clever, Mr. Mitchell. I reasoned that the obvious place would be the safe, and that if I merely placed the document in a desk drawer, it would be safer. But it would appear that my stratagem backfired. Yeah, it sure would appear that way. Well, come on, Lieutenant Hammer. If I may be of any further help in this matter, gentlemen, please let me know. Don't worry, we will. Well, what do you think, Mitchell? About Khalid? Yes. I don't know, Lieutenant Hammer. He seems real anxious to help. Maybe a little too anxious. That was my thought, too. His story sounded almost rehearsed. I beg your pardon, gentlemen. Yes? It is permitted to see Khalid now. I am Abura, his aide. Sure, sure. But we'd like to ask you a couple of questions first, Abura. Certainly. Were you with Khalid last evening? Yes. All evening? Right. Yes. Up until the time I drove him home, which was about midnight, it was then that we discovered the disappearance of his wife. Mm, that coincides with what Khalid told us, Mitchell. Yeah. What did the two of you do last night, Abura? Why, first we had dinner at a restaurant named Ali's, a favorite place with Khalid. Then I drove him to the building which he was to dedicate. There was the ceremony and his speech. Uh, after that, I drove him back to his house here. I see. Well, uh, all checks. Okay, Abura, thank you. Hey, you're quite welcome. Come on, Lieutenant. Yes, well, that sort of puts Khalid in the clear, I guess. 
Yes, and it increases my interest in his servant's grave. Mikan? Yeah. I think we'd better try and locate him right now. See if we can find out just why Khalid's wife canned him. So we start checking all the hotels and rooming houses in the city. Four hours and 16 hotels later, we find a desk clerk who recognizes the picture of Mikan. He tells us that Mikan checked out an hour ago and took a taxi cab to the depot. We do likewise in a hurry. Mitchell, it would appear that our case is beginning to fall into place. Several days ago, the secret document disappears. Shortly after that, Khalid's wife dismisses the servant Mikan. Last night, Khalid's wife is murdered, and now this morning, Mikan appears to be trying to flee the city. You think uh, Mikan's the boy who stole the document and knocked off Khalid's wife, huh? It would certainly appear that he... Wait, wait. Yeah, yeah, that's Mikan. Come on. The train is ready to pull out. Mikan is trying to get aboard. Yeah, he's not going to make it. We're gaining on him. He is old. He cannot move quickly. Okay, Mikan, hold it. Uh, so, so, Mikan, let go of me. Stand still. You seem to be in an awful hurry to get out of town, Mikan. I, I was just taking a vacation trip. Do not lie. That newspaper under your arm, it is folded to the story of the murder of Khalid's wife. That is why you were leaving. Do not deny it. I... Very well. Yes, yes, that is why I was leaving. I knew that I would be blamed for the killing. Oh? But I'm innocent. I swear I did not kill her. You were dismissed by her several days ago. There was a violent quarrel between you. Yes, yes. What was the quarrel about, Mikan? I... Answer! What was the quarrel about? I... I cannot tell you. Indeed. Then I have something to tell you. You are under arrest on suspicion of murder. Mitchell, I must say, I do not understand nor enjoy your attitude. Here we have a very logical suspect, a man who can give us no alibi whatsoever for last night, and who refuses to tell us why he quarreled with the dead woman. Yet you are not satisfied. Neither are you, Hama. What? You're not trying to convince me. You're trying to convince yourself. Now, see here, Mitchell... Look, you don't believe me, Khan's the murderer and document stealer any more than I do. I... Yes, yes, you are right, Mitchell. Mm. It does not seem very likely that a poor, simple old servant who had been in the employ for many years would suddenly betray his mistress' husband and kill his mistress. But if Mikan is innocent, where does that leave us? Right in the middle of nowhere. Uh, Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Lieutenant Hammer speaking. Yes? Yes? What is that? You are certain of this? I see. Very well, thank you. Well, Mitchell... Indeed, we do have the wrong man in jail. What do you mean? I am now convinced that the old servant is innocent. And moreover, I know who the guilty man is. Well, don't leave me there. That was the police laboratory. Those footprints you observed beside the road near where the wife's body was discovered in the ditch. Yeah, yeah, you were going to have the lab check They did check them and compared them with the prints of all those who had any possible connection with the case. Whose prints were they? They belonged to Khalid's aide, Abuda. chimes mean good times on NBC. There's fun for you tomorrow with two of your favorite families, the Blandings and the Harrises. Mr. and Mrs. Blanding stars Cary Grant and Betsy Drake in the title roles as the proud but somewhat bewildered owners of the famous Dream House. The Phil Harris Alice Faye show stars Phil and Alice, of course, plus ever-helpful Frankie Remley, Brother Willie, and Delivery Boy Julius. Yes, there are laughs tomorrow and every Sunday with Mr. and Mrs. Blandings and the Phil Harris Alice Faye show. You are listening to Dangerous Assignments, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell. So all of a sudden, it looks like our case is winding up fast. We beat it back out to Khalid's house. Abura is still there. But, gentlemen, I do not understand the reason for all these questions. Nor do I. Abura is my aide. I trust him completely. Yeah? Abura, I thought you told us you were with Khalid all evening. Why, certainly. Then how do you explain the footprints beside the road? Footprints? Mm. I, I, I do not understand. We uh, spotted some footprints beside the road near the ditch where Kali's wife's body was found. The police lab says that they're your prints, Abura. What? There must be some mistake. Indeed, there was a mistake. And it appears that you made it, Abura. Wait, wait. What is it, Kali? But of course, Abura. Do you not remember? What are you talking about, Kali? The car, the engine trouble. Oh, yes, 
The shock of being suspected made me forget. Forget what? You see, on the way home last evening, Mitchell, we had engine trouble. The car sputtered and died. Abura got out to investigate, found the trouble and fixed it. That is apparently how his footprints happen to be beside the road. I can't live to think that we were within a few feet of your wife's body at the time. Well, Mitchell? Yeah, Lieutenant, another lead up in smoke. A very perplexing case, Mitchell. Suddenly we have no suspect. I know. Khalid couldn't very well have done it if he was dedicating a building at the time. And Khalid told us Abura left those prints beside the road while repairing the car. That appears to clear Abura. Yeah, neither one of us believes that the old servant, Mikan, did the job. Well, perhaps someone we do not know killed Khalid's wife. Yeah, but what gets me is, why was she killed? Was it to shut her mouth about something? Was there some kind of a double cross involved? If we could but answer those questions, we... What's the matter? Here, on my desk, I just noticed. There is a note for me. Ah, the laboratory technician has been trying to get in touch with us, Mitchell. He has something further to report. Oh, where is the lab? Downstairs in the basement. Come on, let's find out what's on his mind. Uh, Here we are, Mitchell. This door on the left. Okay. Hmm. Locked? The technician must be out looking for us. You got a key? Yes, yes. We can wait for him inside. After you. Thanks. Where's the light switch? On the wall to your left. There. Now, I'm there on the floor. Yes, I see. Brother, that the technician? Yes, stabbed to death. Looks like whatever he wanted to tell us, somebody else didn't want him to. Yes. So I guess now we'll never know what it was. Perhaps we will, Mitchell. What do you mean? If we are lucky. Hmm? You see, it is required that all reports to be prepared in duplicate. What? Hey, maybe the killer didn't know that. That is our one hope. Where are the duplicate copies kept? In this basket. Wait, perhaps this is it. Further report on footprints near scene of murder. Yeah, that must be it. Let's have it. Here you are. I see. I don't get it. Don't get what? He says that there were traces of cement dust on some of those footprints of Abura's near the ditch, but... No cement dust on the rest of the prints. But what does that mean? I don't know. Wait, there's some more. He examined the footprints around Khalid's house. He says that Khalid's footprints also show traces of cement dust. Mitchell, this is very strange. Mm. At the scene of the crime, some of Abura's footprints contained cement dust. Others did not. Then at the house, Khalid's prints contained some of the cement dust. I do not see what... Hold it a minute. What? Yeah. I think a few things just fell into place. Look. Suppose you go over the lab here and see if there are any clues to the technician's killer. I'm going over and have another talk with Khalid. But I do not understand the purpose of your visit, Mr. Mitchell. Surely I have answered all of your questions? I don't think so, Khalid. Look, I want you to think back to the evening of the murder again. Now, tell me exactly what happened. But we have been over it before. And we're going over it again. Very well. My aide, Abura, drove me into the city. We had dinner at a favorite restaurant of mine, a place named Ali's. Yeah, yeah, go on. After that, Abura drove me to the new building which I was to dedicate. And from then on, Abura wasn't out of your sight, huh? That's right. He... Well, well, of course, he had to go back to get my speech. What's that? Why, yes, I... I guess I forgot to mention that to you before. You sure did. You see, when I arrived at the new building, I discovered that my speech was missing from the pocket of my coat. A reason that it must have slipped out while we were dining... So I sent Abura back to the restaurant to get it. I see. How long was he gone? Oh, uh, ten or fifteen minutes, perhaps. Could it have been longer than that? Well, I suppose a few minutes more. Look, Khalid, it's very important we establish just how long Abura was gone. I know it could not have been more than a half hour, because I was scheduled to speak a half hour after I arrived, and Abura had returned with the speech before then. Wait a minute. You say that Abura brought your speech back to you? But of course, that is what I sent him after. Yeah. I could figure, all right. He could have lifted it out of your pocket. Then, when he came back, he handed it to you, and you figured he'd gone back to the restaurant to get it. Mitchell, I I do not understand all this. I'll explain in a minute. Now, look. Did you discover your speech was missing as soon as you arrived at the new building? Yes, as I was getting out of the car. And you sent Abura back after it right away? Yes. Hmm. So Abura, when he left, hadn't been in the new building at all? Well, Well, yes, that is right. 
Of course, he came inside the building a half hour later when he returned my speech to me. Yeah, that's what I thought. Now, I'd like to know about a few locations. Locations? Yes. That new building you dedicated, how far is it from your house here? Why, about a 15-minute ride. I see. And this restaurant where you ate, Ollie's, how far is that from the new building? Why, that is also about a 15-minute drive in the opposite direction from the building. Mitchell, these questions you are asking, surely you do not suspect that Abura is involved in this affair? Right now, it's a lot more than just a suspicion, Khalid. What? Oh, I, I cannot believe it. Well, the way it adds up. Abura swiped your speech. Then, when you told him to go back to Ali's restaurant to get it, he drove to your house instead, killed your wife, and then returned to the new building with your speech. But, but why would he kill my wife? That, I'm not sure of yet, but my hunch is that it ties in with the theft of that document. Mitchell, your suspicion of Abura, can you prove it? That's what I'm going to find out right now, Khalid. How? I'm going over to that restaurant and talk to Ali. If he tells me that Abura didn't come back there to get your speech that night, then I guess that's the final nail in Abura's coffin. I head for Ollie's. It's almost midnight when I get there and there aren't any customers and a little guy is sitting at a table in the center of the place all alone. Are you, Ollie? Yes. What is it? My name is Mitchell. I'd like to ask you a couple of questions about last night. Questions? What, what question? Two men came to your restaurant last evening. Khalid and his aide, Abura. Uh, that is quite right. They frequently dine here. Did you see either one of them again after they left here? Yes. What? Don't tell me it was Abura. Why, yes. He returned about half an hour later and said that Khalid had misplaced his speech. Abura searched around the table where they had eaten, found the script, and left. Oh, fine. What is the matter? Nothing much except my airtight case just sprang a king-sized leak. I do not understand. Well, you've got company there, Ollie. I don't understand either. Abura was only gone from the new building a half an hour. It's 15 minutes each way from there to here and from there to Khalid's house. So he couldn't have gone both places during that time. If he came here, he sure couldn't have gone to Khalid's house and killed his wife. Hey, Fendi, I do not know what any of this is about, but if you are through asking questions, I suggest that you leave. It is late, and I am tired. I would like to close up. Okay, Ali. Funny. I'd have sworn Abura was my boy, but right now he's looking awfully clean, so that leaves me right back where I started, fresh out of Leeds. Please, Effendi, if you do not mind. I... Okay. Hey, must be hotter than I thought in here. You're starting to sweat yes, all sir. of a sudden. Yes, sir, I'm not feeling very well. Now, if you will please leave. Yeah, I... Yeah. I'm leaving right now. What stopped me cold is the wall behind Ali. There's a serving window there, but it's pulled down so that there's just a crack left. And in that crack, I spot a glint of metal, a gun barrel. All of a sudden, I know why Ali's sweating. And also, I know I'm not fresh out of Leeds after all. I start edging towards the door, real casual-like, but I don't quite make it. That will keep you right where you are until I can get around the partition, Mitchell. Yeah, Bora, it sure will. It would appear that Ali here is not a very skillful actor. I don't know. Seems to me I'd sweat, too, if I knew you were holding a gun on me. Oh, please, Abura, do not kill me. I did as you ordered. I said everything you told me to say. I will deal with you later, Ali. You know, Abura, I think I've finally figured out why you killed Khalid's wife. Indeed? Yeah, she was the one who stole that document for you. That's probably why she fired the old servant, Mekan. He found out about it and confronted her. But when we questioned him, he was still loyal enough to her memory not to tell us anything. Quite right. Khalid's wife did procure the document for me, but when she learned that the United States was sending an agent over here to investigate, she became frightened. She said she was going to tell Khalid everything after he returned from dedicating the building. So you knew you'd have to shut her mouth, huh? You lifted Khalid's speech out of his pocket at dinner, and knowing he'd discover it was missing and send you after it, that gave you time to get to Khalid's house. His wife knew why you'd come. She ran out of the house. You chased her to that ditch and killed her there. Quite right, Mitchie. Later, you realized you might have left footprints near the ditch, so when you were driving Khalid home, you faked engine trouble at that spot and got out of the car and planted some more footsteps there as a cover, huh? May I ask how you found out about me, Mitch? The cement dust tripped you up. You killed the lab technician to get his report. What you didn't know was that there was a duplicate copy. Uh, that was rather <laughs> stupid of me, wasn't it? Yeah. That report showed traces of cement dust in some of your prints, and none in others. I remembered colleague telling me that the cement work in that new building wasn't even finished yet. That meant cement dust on the floors. 
You hadn't set foot in the building yet when Khalid sent you after the speech, so when you killed his wife and left those first footprints, there was no cement dust in them. Yeah, but later, when I pretended car trouble and got out of the car, I did have cement dust on the bottom of my shoe. That's right, because in the meantime, you'd been inside that building while Khalid was making his speech. I admire your cleverness, Mitchell. It is a pity it comes too late for you. Oh, what happens now? Oh, to a clever man such as yourself, the answer should be quite obvious. You and Ali here are the only ones who know my little secret. Oh, Buddha. No, you're not going to I'm kill. afraid I must, Ali. Yes, I must kill both. Yeah, I got news for you, Abura. You're going to have to choose which one of us to kill. What do you mean? I will kill both of you. I don't think so. Ali and I are on opposite sides of the room, and you're in the center. You shoot one of us, the other will jump you. So which one of us is it going to be? Take your pick. I'm just running a bluff. Ollie's too terrified to be of any help, but the bluff works because the Bora takes his eyes off me a second to shoot a glance at Ollie. And that second is long enough. I dive for the light switch. The slug whistles over me. I hug the floor in the dark and fish my gun out of my pocket. Now I'm going to wait and let a Bora make the next move. Then I hear a car outside. There's light enough through the window to tell me it's Lieutenant Hama. This is just great. If he walks in that door, he'll get a slug. And if I try to warn him, I'll reveal my position and then I'll collect the slug got to think of something fast. Then my elbow bunched an object beside me, a serving cart loaded with dishes. I push it a few inches. The wheels don't make any noise. I give it a shove towards the wall and wait. Before I close a shot in the direction of the noise, I spot the flash and let him have it. Mitchell. I'm okay, Lieutenant. Get the lights. Kali told me you were over here. By the looks of Abura, I would say the work has been done. Yeah. Is it safe now? Uh Uh-huh. You can crawl out from under that table, Ollie. So, Abura was our killer. Yeah, he threw me off the trail by getting Ollie to give him an alibi, but I finally tumbled to it. Yeah. Abura had a pretty neat scheme, Rig, but it was that cement dust that pinned the killing on him. I guess that's what you might call concrete evidence. Assignment starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell with Herb Butterfield as the commissioner is written by Bob Reif and Adrian Jondo with music by Robert Armbruster and is produced and directed by Bill Karn. Others in today's cast were Jan Arvan, Paul Duboff, Shep Menken, Wally Mayer, and Don Diamond. Be with us again next week at this same time when Brian Donlevy, starring in the role of Steve Mitchell, will embark on another dangerous assignment. <laughs> Three chimes mean good times on NBC. Tomorrow, there's another hour-and-a-half broadcast of radio's greatest show, The Big Show, starring Eddie Arnold, Jack Carson, Eddie Cantor, Olivia de Havilland, Martha Ray, and many more. Your MC on The Big Show, of course, is the glamorous and unpredictable Tallulah. And tomorrow, Theater Guild on the Air presents Light Up the Sky, starring Joan Bennett, Sam Levine, and Thelma Ritter. Now hear Herbert Marshall as The Man Called X on NBC. This is Cerebral Cinema, Movies of the Mind.